I'm Sharon Batters. Thank you so much for joining me for the Daily Treasure podcast. Today's devotional is called The Roots of Legacy. And this will be our last devotional in our Treasures Along the Way series. Tomorrow we begin our What She Said series. And I'm so excited to introduce you to the authors who will be joining us for the next few weeks. Today's devotional is called The Roots of Legacy. And today's treasure is from Joshua 4, verses 21 through 22. And he said to the people of Israel, when your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. And Psalm 145, verse four, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Our pastor son and friends officially launched Stone Throw Church, a new congregation in Middletown, Delaware. And I am suddenly whisked down a tunnel of memories God is opening my eyes to something I can barely get my mind around. Legacy has an even deeper meaning as I consider the beginnings of this new work. Sadly, many who meet Jesus through this congregation will not know the roots of this vision. Yet this congregation is the fruit of prayers prayed that started over 100 years ago. The new congregation is located in the same town where my grandparents lived in a house my father built where my parents raised my siblings and me until I was 12 years old. My parents were childhood sweethearts who attended the local high school. My father built many of the homes on the east side of town, as well as a housing developed he named after me, Sharondale. My mother and her mother, my grandma George, were charter members of one of the local churches. Grandma believed Sundays were meant for rest, so when my two girl cousins and I went to her house after church, we spent at least part of the afternoon sitting on lawn chairs in the backyard, reading our Sunday school papers. Grandpa George, who didn't attend church while Grandma was alive, was inside, listening to the Phillies on the radio, smoking his cigar, and falling asleep to the drone of the announcers. All activities which led my grandmother to conclude her husband was hopelessly lost. Childhood in Middletown was idyllic. We played in the woods and built dams in the clean stream so we could cool off during the lazy, hazy summer days. On hot afternoons, we played board games on the porch or looked for the perfect turtle to enter into the vacation Bible school turtle race. My siblings and I held 4th of July parades and performed puppet shows for our parents. We walked into town, sometimes balancing ourselves in the stone wall surrounding the old cemetery along the way. We visited the old-fashioned Five and Dime and bought genuine cherry Coke at the soda shop. You know the kind, with real cherry syrup and maraschino cherries at the bottom of the real glass. There is an old Methodist church in Middletown where my mother led the Brownies and Girl Scouts and I was one of her girls. I walked the streets of this little town all by myself and sold more boxes of Girl Scout cookies than anyone else in my troop. Sometimes we attended movies at the old Everett Theater 25 cents to see Tammy starring Debbie Reynolds, definitely my all-time favorite childhood movie. We attended the same little church where my mother grew up as a charter member. No nurseries, no kids church, nowhere to take crying children unless you were my father. I remember well daddy taking me out of the service, applying discipline and carrying me back to the pew. I learned early how to sit in church. How much of church actually soaked into my little mind? Frankly, I can't remember one sermon I heard, but I do remember my best friend and I timed the pastor's prayers, giggling on the back row during Sunday evening services and the pastor reprimanding us for our bad behavior. I remember the hymn sings and how we always picked out the most upbeat songs as our favorites. You know the ones, nothing but the blood and wonderful grace of Jesus. This little church helped build a rich heritage of hymnology that has carried me through dark, dark days. When the church doors were open, my parents made sure we were there. Sunday school teachers, vacation Bible school programs, Sunday night services, along with Sunday worship. Every piece of church life impacted my worldview in a way I recognize anew has influenced the way we raised our children and long for our grandchildren to embrace. Every time I enter an old church, the scent and feel of the building remind me of my childhood church life. I think that's what I'm trying to get my mind around these days. Sometimes we think teaching is only through speaking or reading or preaching, but there is such a legacy of faith in my own soul that comes from relationships within my covenant family. 
I long to pass on to our children and grandchildren this legacy. I want them to be captured by the joy of knowing Jesus because they are watching their parents and grandparents live lives that reflect His love and grace. I have to admit, I wasn't really impressed with my grandmother's way of expressing her faith. She seemed rule-driven and I wanted freedom, yet perhaps it was her prayers that helped turn my heart back to Jesus when I strayed off the path of intimacy with Him. Perhaps her prayers, prayed before our children were born, contributed to our son, her great-grandson, leading a congregation in the very town where I first remember those strong family connections and experienced church life. Last week, our three church campuses celebrated the birth of Stone's Throw, now called The Town, with a joint dinner, worship, and communion. All three worship bands led the music. It was loud. It was joyful. It was moving. Little children clapped and moved their bodies in time with the music, literally dancing in the aisles. Seeing our young people and children embrace church life as a place of joy and fun is perhaps one of the best parts of worship for me. During one of the songs, Chuck leaned over and laughing said, if your grandmother could see this, she would be turning over in her grave. And I thought, if she can see it, she is seeing through the eyes of Jesus and I think she just might be dancing in heaven as she recognizes God is answering her prayers by sending her great-grandson to proclaim Jesus in her hometown. Yes, the roots of legacy run deep. What a gift to see the sweet fruit of generational praying and worship. And here's an update for this church. 10 years later, Stones Throw Church changed their name to the town and moved into their new home. The first Protestant church built within the city limits of Middletown, Delaware in 50 years. The last one built, the Little Orthodox Presbyterian Church. My father helped build and where my grandmother and mother were charter members. The same little church where my parents took my siblings and me from the time we were born. Some might drive by that little church and conclude nothing significant ever happened there. Yet God planted seeds in that church almost 100 years ago that are growing sweet, eternal fruit. The roots of legacy grow deep. Thanks so much, friends, for being with us today for Treasures Along the Way, our last day of Treasures Along the Way. Tomorrow we start a whole new series. And as we wrap up this series, I want to remind you of the Help and Hope podcast. I want to remind you that God's love is presented in so many different ways, and sometimes our hearts are hemorrhaging so badly that we can't even hear or see that God is near. But somebody else's story can be the tourniquet that stops our bleeding for just a moment so that we are able to recognize God's presence in the gifts that He sends our way, the treasures along the way. And one of those treasures that I hope will help stop the bleeding in your broken heart if your heart is broken or perhaps in the heart of a friend is God's presence in suffering. My conversation with Glenna Marshall. What a privilege to meet Glenna and to hear about how she experienced not just one life crisis, but numerous ones such as infertility, ministry conflict, and chronic pain all at the same time. All at the same time. And even more than that, how do you just survive? just one, but but thrive all of these. Well, Glenna, who wrote the book, The Promise is His Presence, Why God is Always Enough, joined me to share her journey that has taken her to some very broken places. But as you will hear, she discovered priceless treasures along the way as she struggled to make sense of it all. So I hope that as we wrap up our Treasures Along the Way series, that you will check out this conversation that I had with Glenna that you will recognize a soulmate, that you will be encouraged to walk by faith wherever God has placed you, and that you will share her story with others. Go to helpandhopenow.org, that's helpandhopenow.org, and look for my conversation with Glenna Marshall, God's Presence in Suffering. Friends, thanks so much for joining us for this series, Treasures Along the Way. I look forward to being with you tomorrow as we start a new series in 2024.